Hey, it's Dr. Adam Nally. I'm coming to you a second time trying to get this to work. We had a bad feed last time and apparently it was quite sketchy and it was popping in and out. Um, my name is Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board certified family physician. I'm a board certified obesity medicine specialist. I've been in practice about 20 years and I've been in private practice about 18 years and about 15 of those years I've been doing ketogenic diets with my patients or low carb diets with my patients having great success um, doing full spectrum family medicine with a very powerful uh, 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 heavy heavy emphasis on ketogenic diets uh, in my practice. Uh, that's who I am. That's what we're doing. Uh, we're going to talk all about fats and ketogenic diets in this video. Um, I'm currently live on Facebook live right now. Uh, for those that are on the replay uh, or those that are logging in right now, please uh, put in the chat bar where you're from. If you're new to the uh, replay, if you're new to the live stream, uh, put a one in the chat bar. If you're if you're, it's an old hat, to you put a two in the chat bar so I know you're here. Uh, Diana's from Delaware. Hello, hi, hey, Leanna and Tammy uh, from Dallas. Hello again. Thanks you guys for sticking around and coming back. Hopefully, this feed is moving better. Um, if it if it is less sketchy, let me know so I know that we're getting a better stream. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take this live stream and I'll put it on YouTube uh, a little later, uh, probably tomorrow. That way you get a, a, the the uh, clear uh, live stream and the whole thing will be there on YouTube. Um, hello, Rhonda, how are you? Hello, Marnie from Utah and Sky from Alberta, Canada. Wow, cool. So we got lots of people checking in. Alvin from Texas, I appreciate that. So what I wanted to do tonight, as people are signing in and uh, you let me know where you're from, I'll take some questions after I go through this, but why don't, I wanted to talk about fats. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, show you without losing my sound here, and I'm gonna see if I can turn sound on there as well, so you've got sound on both. Um, and I'm gonna show you, I mean, let me see if I can put it up this way. So there are, there are really four types of fats and the four types of fats you can see listed, right? I get my finger to work right, right there, right here. There are short chain fats, there are medium chain fats, there are long chain fats and very long chain fats. The main types of fats that we use as humans is the short, medium and long. Um, and each of these fats plays a role in how our bodies use them. Uh, if it's a short chain fat, it's less than five carbons bound together. If it's a medium chain fat, it's six to 12. And if it's a long chain fat, it's greater than 13. Um, very long chain fats or exist too, and those are greater than 22, but we don't usually talk about those as much, uh, but they do exist. So it's important to, to understand that. And so those are the types of fats that are available. Now, uh, the, the length of the fat is important because of the way it affects your body's satiety and the way the fuel is accessible in a ketogenic lifestyle. So short chain fats, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor here. Let me see if I can, maybe I can switch screens so that it's, uh, you can see it uh, a little more clearly. Maybe you can see that a little better. The short chain fats, and I don't know if you can see, there it is. So short chain fats right here. The, uh, these, these and the long chain fats, whoop, I went backwards the wrong way. Let's go, there we go. Uh, it is all about the hormones, by the way. Short chain fats uh, and long chain fats increase your satiation. Uh, and they, they, they have an absorptive a time frame in the gut. Medium chain fats are absorbed very quickly right into the gut and can be used by the liver almost immediately. Uh, but the long and the short chain fats have a satiety effect. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute if we have a chance to. Uh, but what, that's what I wanted you to see first. Second, the second thing that's important I want you to see is that there are types of fat. And the types of fat that are available, and let me see if I can switch this around here. Um, that might work better, maybe I'll do it this way. That'll work a little better. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll move out of the way so you can see the other piece in just a second. But there are, there are three, uh, in addition to the length of the fats, there are three types of fats. There's saturated, polyunsaturated, and monounsaturated. Now the saturated fats are saturated fat chains, and hopefully you can see this here where there's a single bond uh, between all of the carbons, and those carbon lengths can be any number of lengths like we talked about in chain length, and that doesn't really matter. But if it's a single bond, um, what ends up is these fats are solid at room temperature. These are gonna be your lards, your cheeses, your butters, your coconut oils, um, and they, they have no double bonds between them. The polyunsaturated fats are gonna be, and I don't know if you can see, I'll, and I'll swap positions here with my face, uh, down here on the, the base, the, on the unsaturated fat section, let me see if it may be more clear there. Um, they have at least uh, more than they have two or more double bonds linking them together. Now, the, the one on the bottom you see here uh, is actually a monounsaturated fat because it only has a single double bond, where polyunsaturated fats would have maybe two or three of these double bonds linked together. 
Um, the polyunsaturated fats are the PUFAs. These uh, are going to be your fish oils, your canola oils, and then your monounsaturated fats are going to be usually your vegetable oils, olive oil, nut oil, avocado oil, those kind of things. So, so those are the those are the types of fats that you see available that we eat and that are that are a part of our foods. Um, so hopefully that, that's kind of clear, and hopefully that gives you some some insight into the types of fats. Very few people talk about this. Um, and, I, and there's a reason I'm talking about this, uh, and, and what I want you to understand is that uh, in a ketogenic lifestyle, if you're eating um, fat, a large percentage of the types of fats you're going to you, you taking in are going to be your saturated and your polyunsaturated fats. Now we can argue about whether saturated fats important or uh, is is heart disease protect uh, causing or not. That's a whole other topic which I've addressed in multiple times on blogs and, and on various um, uh, videos. Uh, just to give you the nuts and bolts, uh, saturated fats may actually raise your LDLC, but there's no correlation between taking in saturated fat and risk of heart disease. Uh, and, and that was actually shown in the 2016 British Medical Journal study of about 68,000 people. So, that, But that's a different story, and you can look at that on a different video. What I want you to understand and what I think is really important is that in, in regards to the, the, the saturated fats, those are usually animal products. The polyunsaturated fats are going to be fish oils or they're going to be olive oils, those kind of things. And they come in two forms. They come in a, an omega-3 fatty acid and they come in an omega-6 fatty acid. Um, the omega-3 fatty acids are decreased inflammation and the omega-6 fatty acids actually increase inflammation and disease. The challenge is that they compete with each other in the gut as they're being absorbed. And because of this competition, the average American eats about um, 10 times more of the 10 times more of the omega-6s than they do the omega-3s, which uh, we want to see this ratio of about a two to one for every for the for every two omega three fatty acids you want one omega six. The challenge is our diet is about twenty to one or one to twenty in the opposite direction. We take in about ten to twenty times the omega six because of the way it competes and it's absorbed to every one of the omega threes, and that's why we see so much inflammation and so much problem with our diet because a large percentage of what we've been told to do is are uh, vegetable type oils, which are more predominantly omega-6s. Uh, and so that's one of the challenges that arises. Um, there are, these are the five types of omega fatty acids. There's alpha linoleic, uh, EPA, DHEA, uh, or DHA, pardon me, linoleic acid and arachidonic acid. And these are the types of omega-3s and 6s. I won't go into that specifically. I just want you to understand that the, because of the types that are there and because of the way they compete with the polyunsaturated fats, um, it's easier to get a higher ratio of omega-6 unless you're careful with the types of diet you follow. Now, why is this important and what does it relate to? Well, each type of fat source, if you eat real food, and I'm a big proponent of eating real food, when you eat real foods, the, the big challenge is that um, those real foods come in various forms of saturated, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated fats. Um, I've listed here in the greens the various types of fat, and I apologize about the, the dogs in the background. Um, the, in the green are the ones that are going to be the highest in saturated fat, the lowest in omega-6 fatty acids, and better in the omega-3s. So your MCT oil, your coconut oil, your cheese, your butter, your heavy cream, these are going to be more, more effective in regards to saturated fat, um, lower in your PUFAs, uh, your omega-6s, higher in your monounsaturated fats, which are actually uh, easier for your body to handle, and the yellows are the ones that you want to be careful with and use occasionally. And the reason is that they're real high in omega-6 fatty acids. And then the last one's hazelnut, almond oil, and hyaluronic sunflower oil. You want to avoid like the plague if you can. So this is actually really, really important. Canola oil is actually um, not so safe. Canola oil is higher in omega-6s. And so you don't want to use it. It's going to be more inflammatory. That's one of the big challenges you see there. So I'm uh, hopefully that's clear. This is going to give you some percentages in regards to what those what what those um, fat contents are. And let me see if I can switch this so you can see a little bit better. Um, hopefully a little more clear. If I take myself out of the window, my mic shuts off, so I can't pull myself out there. But just as you can see here, the, the reason the predominant fats that a lot of folks, folks using a ketogenic or, or carnivore diet follow it are going to be your MCT oils, your coconut oils, your cheeses, your butters, your heavy cream. Now. MCT, when you isolate it out, um, is purely medium chain triglyceride. If you eat fat in its normal form, like cheese or butter, 
uh, or beef uh, tallow or, or lard, you can see that it, it has a, a, a more blended effect of, of the mono and polyunsaturated fats. It's going to have higher contents of omega-3s available to you, um, a little bit lower in regards to the saturated fat, but a lot of these have more small chain fats, and we'll talk about why those are important here in just a minute. But I, I hope that that's... Um, more clear. Yvonne says, it's hard to read the green with the blue background. It is, and I realized that, so uh, this screen is not so great for that. But anyway, this says MC2 oil, coconut oil is here, palm kernel oil, and I realize if you're on your phone, this is probably hard to see. Cheese, butter, heavy cream, sour cream, cocoa butter, cream cheese, ghee, beef tallow, lard, and duck fat. So hopefully that's clear to you and you can see that. It's out now. So let me, let me, uh, I'm going to close this out and go here for just a second so I can see what I'm doing. Now, what, what's important about this? Well, number one, many of the animal fats contain some, contain short chain fatty acids. And so what I want you to see is the short chain fatty acids, there's really five of them, three of them that, that play a role with us. These act as fuel for the gut. So your uh, propionic acid, your acetic acid, which is uh, a ketone, and your butyric acid or butyrate, which comes from butter. That's where butter got its name. Um, these actually act as fuel for the bacteria. They're substrates as they're absorbed into the body to be used to either make um, ketones or make glucose in the liver. They decrease inflammation really significantly. And then the short chain fatty acids increase GLP-1, which is a hormone, and PYY, which is another hormone that actually suppress appetite. So these are really important to, to use and to understand. So we like short chain fatty acids. They're important. Short chain fatty acids occur if you, if you use... Um, uh, if you're eating uh, fiber uh, and that fiber passes through the gut and becomes and is broken down uh, through fermentation, that's how that that fiber actually that's how these how that's how the short chain fatty acids are, are created. And so they're 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 byproducts of uh, uh, metabolism of fibers uh, in the distal or the far end of the colon. So important for, for these three pieces. Uh, we like them because they actually help fuel our gut, make our gut healthier, decrease inflammation uh, and de and increase our a sense of fullness or satiety. So very important. Um, all right. So then second, is, let me show you this here. So am I worried about eating too much fat? And the answer is no, I'm not. Now, I don't tell people to go around slathering everything in butter because I don't, I don't think that's important. What I think is if you're eating of 60 to 70% fat, you're getting adequate fat in your diet. Now that occurs if you're eating red meat, pork, bacon, eggs, sausage, because those foods are literally roughly one to one in their relationship. For every gram of protein, there's a gram of fat. And if you calculate the caloric content of that one to one ratio, it's usually somewhere between 60 to 70, 75% fat. And what that ends up doing is that provides uh, in these foods, butters, creams, cheeses, uh, thing, food, uh, it provides butyrate from these foods from animal fat, and that butyrate in, in the L cells of the intestine release GLP-1. That GLP-1 is really important because it actually decreases the uptake of glucose. It decreases the uptake of your triglycerides. So you actually it actually slows that down. So if you're eating real animal fat, not MCT oil in your coffee, but if you're eating real animal fat from real food, you actually see a slowing of the absorption of the fat. So the fat, the short chain fats themselves from real fat actually delay and slow your absorption of fat, which helps in weight loss and those kind of things as well. Um, it decreases the uh, production of ApoB and ApoB4, and that's actually really important to have. Let me go back to that for a second, Part, pardon me. Um, we'll see if I can go back for a second. So that's actually really important. It acts as what's called an ileal break, meaning what happens is it slows down the absorption of these food, the glucose and triglycerides so that your absorption is slower, that you actually feel fuller, you actually eat less, uh, but it allows for the absorption of protein and allows for the maintenance of, of, of body. And that's why people who follow a ketogenic or carnivore diet actually go a, a lot longer and aren't, aren't really hungry. Um, so like, like for me, for instance, today, this is just an experiment. Um, I've had a little bit of ketone in the morning, um, and that's it. I, and I, I've been sipping on some ketones throughout the day, but beyond that, I've had no food for uh, at this point now uh, 26 hours. Uh, and I'm I'm a little bit hungry, but it's I'm not I'm not bad. Just to see with that, uh, and, a, and a ketone again is a short chain fat. That short chain fat stimulates GLP release, increases satiety, slows the, my gut my, my gut metabolism, uh, and actually is very very powerful that way. So. 
Uh, to move on to the next piece here, uh, why is canola oil a problem? Well, canola oil is really high in omega-6 fatty acids. It actually increases amyloid plaquing within the brain, which is one of those things that causes Alzheimer's, as, as are neurofibrillary tangles, and it drives uh, weight gain because of the way uh, it stimulates the body uh, uh, to, to use uh, or decreases the omega-3 fatty acids, uh, and because of the way it's uh, it. it it's present, it, it actually enhances weight gain rather than decreases weight gain because of the inflammatory response, cortisol release, and increased glucose uh, presence. So let me then uh, find the slide that I'm going to use here. Um, so how, how does all this relate to anything and why is this important and what exactly does that mean to you and I? Um, let me find a slide that, that helps you understand um, what I recommend. So uh, this is essentially the dietary approach that I make um, in my office. And let me show this to you here. I think I'll switch back uh, to this slide set. So um, let me put it this way. Oh, uh, that might work better. Uh, uh, Let's do it that way. There we go. So number one, control the insulin by decreasing the carbs less than 20 grams a day. That, that decreases those starches out of your diet. We want to moderate protein, essentially one-to-one -one, uh, ratio of protein to fat. So if you're eating red meat, pork, bacon, egg, sausage, that actually dramatically helps, and you actually see that improve. Um, once you're keto, uh, you, what I find in the clinic is usually people can have as much fat as they want for the first two or three months, and they actually lose weight. But if th that fat is like 90% fat all the time, that weight loss slows down because you become really efficient at absorbing MCT, the medium chain type fats, and you become really efficient at, at uh, absorbing the other fats. You become more keto adapted. Um, once you're keto adapted, if you're decreasing that down to around 70, 60, 70% fat, you'll actually see that weight loss continue to come off. And so that's why I say don't slather everything in butter. If you've been doing this for two or three months, you know, eat real food, do it one to one. And that's really helpful. You want to stay hydrated. You want to replace the electrolytes. And then the key here is let your body's hormones start dictating to you when to eat. Uh, eat when you're hungry. Um, don't eat if you're not hungry. That's the big key. Step seven, we'll talk about supplements. Um, that's we, we won't we actually won't do that that supplements we can talk about later uh, the big thing key thing here about your your long chain fats so long chain fats are going to be your fish oils uh and you know a little bit of olive oil um uh, things of that nature these actually stimulate uh an increase satiety as well uh, and they actually diminish insulin sensitivity if you use them over a period of 10 days. So long chain fats are found in, in coconut oils, they're found in olive oils, they're found in butters. Uh, but if you're using real foods, you're gonna find a nice mixture like we showed you on that previous slide uh, in, in regards to the, these pieces. Hopefully, hopefully that gives you some clarity in that regard. Um, Lots of canola oil growing here in Alberta. I bet, I bet it is, Sky. Um, all right. So, what does all this mean to you and I at the gut level? And and you know, if I eat more fat in my gut, is that really going to you know turn into fat and not let me burn the fat in my fat cells? Well, let me put it this way: the, the short and the long chain fats have to be absorbed through the gut through a process. And I'm going to show you this slide here because I want you to see what this is. This is the cell within the gut lining. Um, and the, you'll notice here that, that the short chain fats and the long chain fats have an inhibitory effect on the metabolism and the release of ghrelin. So this, those two actually decrease your hunger uh, is what they end up doing. Lactate, which is also a short chain fat, does the same thing. It diminishes somatostatin. Somatostatin actually uh, stimulates um, insulin release. It also diminishes, uh, to some degree, uh, glucagon, which is, stimulates a glucose release. So you actually see a dampering of the overall um, speed of the gut, and you see a dampering of the overall hunger. Uh, that's important to understand because, because using real food, which contain both short and long chain fat together, rather than just MCT oil in your coffee, um, actually inhibits your, your hunger. Now, if you're just doing MCT, MCT is absorbed very rapidly through some receptors in the gut and doesn't cause this effect as predominantly as the short and long chain fats do. So that's why it's so important to see that and to look at that. Uh, I, and I'm, I'm going to come to a point with this here in just a second. Essentially, if you're releasing more GLP because of the short chain fat presence, if you're releasing more um, protein YY and you're decreasing ghrelin, what you're seeing right here is you're seeing a diminished of the somatostatin, you're seeing a diminished of glucagon and a lowering of the overall insulin because of what happens. And you're actually increasing your satiety naturally just by the food choices that you're using. Um, so if you're using butter to cook your, your, your fish in, uh, if you're using a little olive oil on your salad, if you're doing those kind of things, uh, you're, you're going to see that dramatic effect. And so that's really important uh, to understand in that regard. Now, um, 
what does that all this mean in the big picture of things? So if you're eating real food after the second or third month and you're eating, you know, bacon, sausage, eggs, uh, you know, you're using butter to, to cook with for foods like fish and chicken, things of that nature, you're, what's going to happen is you're going to see this nice mix of short, medium and long chain fats come into the gut. Uh, you're going to see a slowing of the gut metabolism. And, and no matter what, how much fat you actually eat, it really doesn't matter. Your, your body will tell you if you listen to those hormones, I need more, I need less. So what I tell people is if you if you lower the carbs to 20 grams, if you if you, you, you increase your protein to the need that you have based on your, your body weight, and you can find those calculations on my website, docmuscles.com, and then you use your fat as the lever for hunger. You know, if you're more hungry, you can increase the fat a little more. If you're less hungry, you can decrease that fat a little more. What you're basically doing with that lever is you're actually changing the speed of your gut. You're increasing or decreasing the hormone presence of your uh, gut metabolism and your brain metabolism and it actually it allows your body to then to access the fat that the triglyceride that are that are the medium chain fats that are in the fat cells pull those out and burn those in the liver and it's slowing that absorption of fat from the gut into the body uh and, and so a lot of people say well if you eat the fat in your plate occurs uh, is has to be burned before the fat in your, your cells and that's hogwash that's bro science that's not really true because the fat on your plate if it's the correct type of fat, is going to dictate how rapidly the gut's absorbing that fat, lowering of the insulin, and increasing the speed with which fat's coming out of your fat cells. Now, if that fat on your plate is all MCT because you put it in your coffee and that's all you're eating all day long because you're doing your protein shakes with your MCT oil, then you're not going to slow. You're not going to have that that process occur. You're not going to see a slowing of that gut metabolism, and you probably won't lose weight. And that's what often happens to a lot of my patients in the last three, so at the third to fourth month as they move into this process. So I, I hope that is kind of clear for you, and you you get some in, insight into that. Um, hopefully, I didn't lose you. Um, I'm looking back to see here uh, wherever he's at. Um, so. Uh, what I'll do at this point in time, I guess, is take some questions in regards to what you're, uh, what what you what you may have in in regards to the fat, how that works, and how that fat plays a role. Uh, but I guess the the main issue and the main question is, if you're eating real food, and if that real food is contains a nice mixture of the fats, and so I'll go back to this slide right here, and I'll pop this up on the screen. Um, and I realize the colors are kind of crappy. In fact, you know what? Let me change the colors of these. Uh, colors real quickly while you're sitting here and so you guys are popping some questions up on the screen i'm going to change the color of the this um so you can see that more clearly and then i'm going to let's see if i can do this real quickly I'm doing this on the fly um i'll pull this up here so maybe that you can see that a little bit better um paul you can go back and see it um so so if you're eating real food and your real food is is uh, mixes of cheese or butter or creams or, or ghee, which is ghee and beef tallow come from your red meat, lard, duck fat, those kind of olive oil. You can see that they're nice mixtures of short of, of uh, saturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, and, and monounsaturated fats. And so they, they give you this nice mixture, which is going to slow that, that metabolism of the gut down, increase the satiety hormones, and allow you to process correctly. Um, so Kathy said she lost 25, 29 pounds in her first month, which is actually really common. That's actually really common to see that, Kathy. So uh, let me see if I can pop this up on the screen so people can see that. Uh, congratulations. Hopefully that won't slow down, but it often does by around the third month. So what could be what could cause the lack of satiety even if, if eating a keto diet? Well, the, the Kathy, the question is, what are you eating? What does what your keto diet consist of? Because a lot of those experts out there um, are telling you to eat all their MCT oil and they're telling you to eat all the, the keto food. Um, and that's actually not keto. You're not going to see improvement with that. Um, so that's the question. Uh, Sky says, I can't eat dairy or eggs. You have an allergy. Uh, should I be eating some other fat? Well, so then use, use um, you know, red meat, use pork, use, um, uh, you can use, it, 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 can you do cheeses? A lot of people who can't do dairy can do cheese. So that's something you can look at. Uh, do you actually break out in a rash or what kind of allergy do you have, Sky? Uh, that's something I would I ask my patients. Uh, Tammy says, after keto for three years with 80 pounds lost, 18 months stall, tried everything to lose the last 20, what's the best way to break the stall? Well, again, Tammy, look at, look at are, are you eating real food, number one? Number two, have you... Um, uh, are you listening to your gut hormones? A lot of people are, are eating because they're bored or because they're stressed and they're not eating because they're uh, actually hungry or not. Um, so that's where you, with, if you're doing a ketogenic diet correctly, you're going to see periods of fasting that will occur naturally. Like I said, I've, I've been going 26 hours. 
had a little bit of ketones throughout the day, but that's about it. And I actually feel fantastic and I'm not really hungry. And so that's one of the things that you can see. Now, do I do this all the time? No, I do this periodically just because I just listen. Um, if I had a really stressful day, I may eat more, but today was a good day. Um, if you had a stall, the other thing would be to look at is have your doctor check your thyroid, have your doctor check your female hormones, because those are two other things that are really important to look at. Uh, Kathy said, mostly meat, eggs, and cheese. Um, so then the question is, are you eating um, to, to, your, to satiety? Are you uh, eating to, or are you just eating every three times a day because you think you need to? Or are you eating you know, multiple times because someone told you to do that? That's a good question. Uh, Kathy says, I don't use any additives. I am eating eggs, red meat, salmon. Cabbage is only vegetable. Fruit is avocados. Okay, remember, fruit is a, avocado is a fruit. It has 20 grams per avocado. If you're eating a lot of avocado, that can slow it down. If you're doing teas, I have, I've had three patients come to the office today that drink a lot of black tea or, or Lipton tea. Uh, that's black tea. That contains a tannin that spikes insulin and kicks you out of ketosis. So uh, question number one is, are you in ketosis? Are your ketones above 0.8? Not the urine test strips are worthless after the second month. I do not recommend using the urine test strips after the second month. Uh, you can't trust them. You have to check the blood. Um, I eat whole foods, but have periods of being super hungry and it seems to cycle. So if you have periods where you're super hungry, that's where we increase the fat a little bit um, and or the protein and ensuring that you're eating the protein. Why does multi-day fasting not slow down your metabolism? Why does it not slow down? It actually does slow down your, your metabolism. So if you do multi-day fasting for longer than three days, it actually slows your, it, it decreases um, the deiodinase enzyme within the thyroid and slows the production of the thyroid hormone. Um, so I'm not a big fan of doing it a lot. I, I really am not. I'm not a big fan of prolonged multi-day fasting because it, it can permanently slow your thyroid according to the two studies that we have most recently, if that makes sense. Um, hopefully that answers that question. Does passion tea have tannins also? I don't know exactly what's in passion tea, Deb. Um, I, my assumption is it's a leaf based tea that contains some black tea in it. Uh, I, I, so I don't know, but you, uh, it may. And one of the things you want to, you could check is check your, check your ketones on a day you don't drink it, check your ketones on a day you do drink it about two hours after drinking it and see if it changes the insulin flux. And if the insulin goes up, your ketones will go down. Essentially that's what's going to happen. Uh, but you have to check that through the blood. So something to check out and, and consider that way. Great questions, you guys. Very good questions. Um, I don't know if I missed anybody's questions in here. I'm going to pull back in for a second. Look back uh, down. So I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, Debbie says, Gilbert, so if I'm going to take an omega supplement, you should take omega-3 and, and not 6. Yes. If you're going to take an omega supplement, take 3. Um, let's see. All right. Let's go to the top here. All right. What do you consider a stall? Um, I consider a stall not losing more than two pounds of weight in a month. Uh, a lot of people are gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time. And their waist is shrinking about a half an inch to an inch every month. If they're not seeing shrinkage of the waist and they're not seeing more than two pounds of weight loss on the scale, then I consider that a stall. But what, I've, what a lot of people don't realize is their bodies are remodeling. They're actually seeing their waist shrink, but the scale may not move because they're gaining muscle and losing fat. So, so I body composition everybody in the office every month when they come in and see me, and that's what I consider a stall if that's not happening. Uh, Kathy says, I don't buy the strips, but I'm type 2 diabetic, so I regularly check blood sugar. And it's been running 80 to 98 um, prior bariatric patients, so I have minimal stomach pouch. So, uh, Kathy, then the, the, we know that your blood sugars are running pretty good. That's great. But we truly want to know, are you in ketosis or not? And that, that you may consider if you've hit a stall looking at those test strips uh, with, with the blood. Do I recommend krill oil? No, I don't. Um, do I recommend fish oil? I recommend eating real fish. Uh, the, and again, when you isolate out fish oil, when you isolate out um, MCT oil, you're, you're isolating out one select piece and you're not allowing the gut to slow the absorption down by eating real food. So rather than eating fish oil or krill oil, my suggestion is eat real fish and, and you'll actually see that you're going to get the protein. You're going to see that improve. Um, do I see improvement in MS symptoms with keto? I actually do. I have four multiple sclerosis patients uh, and their symptoms notably improve when they follow a ketogenic diet. Uh, is a fat fast beneficial in a stall? Not usually um, because, because people are ramping up the fat and oftentimes they're adding a bunch more uh, MCT oil, which is not what we want you to do. Um, I've had a few people that get a little benefit from it, but with the multiple patients that I've tried fat fasts with by increasing their fat to 90% of their calories doesn't usually work. What I find works really effectively is when they start using real food uh, and increasing the, the, the fat content of that food by using more red meat uh, or things of that nature. Um, 
When do I recommend you check your blood? I recommend you check your blood uh, bef- uh, after two hours after a meal that you think may have kicked you out of ketosis or a meal that you think is keeping you in ketosis. What ketone monitor do I recommend? I like the uh, the Keto Mojo. That seems to work really well. I also use the uh, the uh, pre- Precision Extra. That I have both of them, and I use both. Um, let's see. What are your thoughts about Speed Keto? Sp- you know what? That is a Speed a Speed Keto is one of those new terms, and, and define it for me because I have not even heard the actual definition that that people are. are are talking about. Give me your, t- Tina, tell me what the definition of speed keto is, because that's one of the things that I'm not even familiar with on definition. Uh, it keeps changing. What, uh, let's see. That was the question on the blood. Uh, will adding berberine and cinnamon help weight loss? Well, it, uh, Linda, if it's, if you're, if you are insulin resistant and you're overproducing insulin, yes, the berberine becomes very effective. If you have PCOS, there's a couple uh, two studies that are very, 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 very powerfully show that berberine is just as effective, if not more effective than metformin when used 500 milligrams a day, three times a day with a ketogenic diet. So I find that the weight loss improves dramatically if you are truly insulin resistant. Uh, so I'm a big fan of using berberine. Uh, cinnamon also has a slight uh, uh, enhancement to the way the body handles insulin as well. So I, li- I like both of those. I've been following you for years. Dr. Nelly lost 80 pounds, changed your life. Oh, thanks. That's awesome. Alex, I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. That actually warms my heart. So I appreciate that. Um, so Joanne says that, so this is Speed Keto. It's a 30-day diet plan with recipes and intermittent fasting. Uh, that I, I, I have not seen I have not seen the plan, so I, I really can't comment, Deb, um, or jo, Joanne, or jo, is it Joanne? Um, I would like to, um, and Deb says, yeah, it's a, it's a menu plan sold by an individual. I have not seen it. I've not looked at it because I haven't paid for it. I just do my own my own component, um, so I, I don't know the answer to that question as to whether speed. You know, my, my, what I find is that I, if I try to follow somebody's dictation on when I fast and when I don't, I, I actually my, it makes me worse. So I actually just I eat when I'm hungry and I don't eat when I'm not, and I'm just ensure that my food is um, is keto based. That's really what I do. Uh, why do the berberine bottles say take only for three months? Um, Mine don't. I don't know why it would say take for three months. Uh, I think the other, if they're putting that on a, a bottle as a disclaimer, it's probably because they want to make sure you're checking with your doctor because berberine does play a role with the insulin and how it affects the insulin. Uh, the plan costs money to do. Yeah, it, I'm sure it does, Diane. Um, not sure on the speed keto thing yourself. I, I really don't know, Tina. Uh, I, I wish I, I, I don't know what the plan actually entails. I've heard the term, but I have not actually seen the dietary plan. Uh, I'm assuming they call it speed keto because they're mixing keto with, with intermittent fasting, so you're seeing more effectiveness. I don't know. Uh, I'd love to see it. If somebody's got it and wants to share it, I'd love to see it. Is bruising easily a side effect of keto? Only if you're not eating enough protein, Kathy. That's the only time I ever see bruising as a, a side effect that you're not taking in enough um, uh, protein. So that's important. Great questions, you guys. Uh, let's see here. And I'm missing any. Uh, Sky says, I get pain in my legs at night when I'm in bed. Could it be potassium? And ma- I take magnesium. So if you're getting pain or cramping, you're probably deficient in zinc or magnesium. If you're getting restlessness or jumpiness, um, that's a that's an inherited disorder that can, that can be helped to some degree with, with zinc and magnesium. Um, but but uh, it, you also may find yellow mustard helps because it contains a small amount of quinine. I like the French's yellow mustard. It seems to work really well. So if you do some summer sausage and a tablespoon of mustard at bedtime, that actually helps it tremendously a lot of times as well. So something to consider. Um, so with the fat chart, should we aim for those that have equal amounts of uh, no, not necessarily. I, I think you're going to see the most satiety with with the short chain fat, with the with the um, saturated fats. So if you're using your cheeses, your butters, your ghee, um, you're going to see great benefit. Um, you know, duck fat, lard, beef tallow, ghee. If you're fi- if you're somewhere in this range, I don't know if you can see my my mouse, where you're hitting 60 percent, uh, you know, uh, uh, saturated fats, about four to five percent PUFA, you know. Um, somewhere in the in the 10, 15 to 20 range of MUFA. That's usually where people see the most benefit in that regard. And I went the wrong way. Oops, sorry, guys. I got to go back here. There we go. Hopefully that helped. Uh, you are very welcome, uh, Sky. Hopefully that gives you some insight. Uh, Tammy said she bought this. The, I'm assuming this is the Speed Keto plan for $40. Haven't started it. 
it's just no nut flours, dairy nuts. Um, so, so they're taking out the nuts. So, so remember, the nut flours will probably contain some increased levels of, of omega-6s uh, and, and, um, and not as much omega-3. Uh, th th that's not a problem if you're using them intermittently, but if you're using it all the time, that, that can slow some people's weight loss. Um, we'll be having mustard for bedtime, says Kathy. Good for you. Um, berberine makes you throw up each time you try to take it. Says, says Rhonda. Um, Rhonda, if, it, if that's happening, are you taking it with a meal? You, you have to take it with a full meal or it will make you nauseated. So, uh, and if it's if it's still making you nauseated, my suggestion is don't use the isolated berberine, switch to using turmeric because turmeric, berberine is the active ingredient in turmeric. You may tolerate turmeric better. Um, hopefully that helps. He has one that he sells or formulated. Is that your, Candace, I'm not quite sure what, you, your question is there. I, I must have missed something further back. Um, to clarify that for me and I can try to answer it. Um, let's see, Tina says, thank you. Oh, no problem. I, I hope, hope it helps, Tina. I, I appreciate your questions. Um, thank you very much. What type of body composition testing do I use? I use an impedance monitor. It's a, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the company that makes it. I, I, it's slipping in my mind, right? It's not the in body, it's the other one. Um, I want to say Tanita, but I can't remember if that's right or not. I'll have to look back at the brand name. It's it's a it's a, a hand and foot uh, impedance measurement is what it is. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Will you be at Metabolic Health Summit in February? I will be there for sure. Yes, I'm. I already bought my tickets. Uh, if you haven't if you haven't bought your tickets, that's always a great summit to be there at. I, I bought my tickets and made my reservation last night. Um, I actually am going to be at KetoCon as well. I decided to go, so I'll be at KetoCon for those of you who are going to be there as well. Uh, so we'll get a chance to chat with you. If, you, if you're at KetoCon or the Health Summit, uh, find me and, and say hello. Let's see. Um, oh, Candace was, said she was, oops, sorry. Candace said she was responding to somebody else's uh, comment. Uh, do I use to net or total carbs? I use total carbs, except for cellulose, which is in the leafy greens. I don't worry about cellulose, but any other carb I do count. So any other carb from vegetables or fruit, I do count. Uh, I, I use total carbs as how I do it. Um, Yes, Tammy, I will be at KetoCon in Austin, in Texas, at the end of this month. Um, am I taking new patients? I am. I am taking new patients. Uh, you guys are doing great. Uh, any other questions, pop them up here, and I'm happy to answer them. And we'll, then i got to go, go back to my charts and work on charts some more. Uh, I will post this up on uh, YouTube in the next probably 24 hours. Um, Miss the beginning of the live. Where would bacon grease fall in regards to that chart there? So bacon grease falls somewhere in the in the ghee, beef, tallow, and lard section. Remember, bacon grease is essentially lard. So your, your bacon grease is falling in that lard section. If you can see that right just above my head. You know what? Let me switch this screen here so you can actually see. Uh, and I realize it's small and the colors are green. So try this. Hopefully that you can see that a little more clear. Maybe what I'll do is go to the opposite. Oh, that didn't work. Mm, that's about the same size. Anyway, sorry. So, so, so lard, bacon grease, 40% um, saturated fat, about 12% PUFA, and 41% MUFA. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, you are very welcome for all the information, Kathy. Hopefully that helps. Um, I missed all oh, the questions sort of flying in. What's the, when's the best time to check your glucose? I answered that earlier on. Sherry watched earlier on. Uh, but usually before breakfast, I would highly recommend, and before a meal. Um, Let's see, can we get a keto summit here in Arizona? That would be awesome. We're, we're working on some stuff. I know some people are working on stuff. We're gonna have one, I, hopefully shortly. Uh, is there something I should eliminate from the keto diet to reduce, reduce hydradenitis? Um, insulin, Deb, if, you, if you're still having a flare up of hydradenitis, your insulin's still high, and we gotta figure out what it is that's doing that with you. Um, let's see, you are very welcome, you guys. Uh, let's see. Um, Oh, there's Rhonda says, great podcast. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, you guys. Hopefully this helps you. Um, my wife is wondering what her hot flashes, why her hot flashes have gotten worse on keto instead of better. Well, remember with keto, you start activating all that fat in your fat cells because you, you start cycling fat in and out of the fat cell. And um, estrogen's bound to fat and albumin that's, that's there. And so what happens is you start seeing a flux in your estrogen and progesterone levels, and you'll start seeing hot flashes until that levels off. The other issue may be if you're, I don't, I don't know how old your wife is, Paul, but if your wife is perimenopausal, that may be playing a role as well. Uh, you guys are very welcome. Uh, hopefully you have a great night tonight. Remember, eat real food, keep the fat high. And when I say fat high, I'm referring to 60 to 70% fat. And remember, a high fat diet is considered a diet more than 30% fat. 
by calorie. So when I say high fat, people think I'm talking about 90%. I'm not talking about that. When, I'm, so when I say high fat, um, I'm talking about a diet that's higher than 30% fat. Now, if you're eating red meat, that, that hamburger is roughly 60 to 70% fat uh, when you cook it. Your steak is 60 to 70% fat when you cook it. Your bacon is probably 75% fat when you cook it. Uh, your egg is literally 70% fat. So those are high fat foods. So if you eat real food, you're getting the protein and the fat at a one-to-one -one ratio, which is essentially 70% fat by calorie. Hopefully that's clear, uh, but that's what I mean by keep the fat high, keep the carbs low, and that should hopefully help a lot. Um, let's see, Linda said she lost 80 pounds, but have installed could your body want to stay at that weight even though you're still overweight? Well, remember, Linda, your body wants to wants to uh, maintain its uh, its weight because it's safe. And so, what you have to do is help the body to lower hormones and allow a shift to occur. And so, as you listen to your body's functionality, uh, and as you start start seeing, you'll start seeing that weight drop little by little by little. But but what happens is your body get, wants to wants to, to keep that level and wants to maintain a level because if it loses fat too rapidly, um, it, it, that's actually dangerous. And so it has to let the skin remodel, it has to let the connective tissue catch up, and then it can start losing fat again. But you have to listen to those hormones and, and it, because it's responding hormonally that way. Um, Kathy says she has terrible reflux. Um, well, keto usually makes it better 85% of the time, 60, 60 to 85% of the time. But if something's stimulating your GERD, then that means there's something in something you're drinking that has too much caffeine uh, or something that's relaxing that sphincter at the stomach. Chocolates, um, cocoa, peppermint, those kind of things can do that. So be aware of that. Uh, will you post this so you can watch the whole thing? So yes, uh, Sherry, I'm going to, this will be up on Facebook. As soon as I finish, it'll, it'll pull up to replay and then I'm going to roll it over to YouTube. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash Dr. Nally, and I'll put this in here so you can see this. Um, it's uh, youtube.com forward slash dr nally. Um, let me pop this up on the screen here so you can see that. Uh, the, all my videos are there on that YouTube channel. I've started rolling everything over to the YouTube there so you can see them and they're available. So check it out on YouTube uh, there and you'll be able to see it. Let's see. Uh, all right, I'm going to take off you guys. Have a good night. I got to do we work on my charts. Uh, why are leafy greens so important to someone otherwise eating meat? That's a great question, Tim, and we'll talk about that on my next uh, video. We'll, uh, we'll do that. We talked about that with the thyroid uh, the, on my thyroid lecture that I did in Salt Lake, but I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up and we'll talk a little bit more about why carnivore works for some people but doesn't work for others and how leafy greens play a role, and it all relates to um, estrogen and testosterone. So that's that's where, the, where, that, where that falls into play. I popped that question up there for, for those in the CF. You guys have a great night. Have a uh, Remember, keep the fat high, keep the carbs low, pass the bacon. Have a good night, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.